took a look at the Power 20 and Power 35. Now the Power 20 is a great performing drone delivering smooth cinematic 4K images, but it was limited by its camera selection and its inability to follow fast moving objects. Enter the Power 35. And as you can see, this one has more camera selections with the ability to carry a high resolution action camera. Best part is this one has the performance to follow fast moving objects like bikes and cars. But you wouldn't want to fly this drone indoors, believe me. But what if there was a drone that can do the best of both worlds? Well, that's not possible with the Power 25 v2 so let's open this up and see what's new okay so here it is the Pavo 25 v2 yes i did say v2 now i did review the original Pavo 25 last year and although it was a great drone with pretty good outdoor flight characteristics there were some things that could be improved including a non-damping action camera mount and the inability to carry an o3 air unit well that's said to be improved with the version 2 so let's open this up and see what's new all right foam and the first thing you see here are some spare propellers. That's pretty cool that we have two sets of propellers with the drone. Next, we have an LED strip, which is pretty cool. And we've seen this before on other drones like the Pavo 20 and the Pavo 35. And this is a pretty cool look for this drone, especially if you're gonna fly this drone at nighttime. Next, we have a harness here for our VTX. Now, this one features a plug and play affair if you're gonna use the O3 air unit, which we are gonna use today. And this makes it very simple to install your VTX. No soldering required. So it's cool that Beta FB includes this with the kit. Finally, we have a bag here with some camera mounts, some bolts, and an Allen wrench. So this will be used to actually attach your FPV and action camera. Then we have the drone itself, the Pavo 25B2, and this thing looks amazing. It looks a little bit different than the original one, and we'll take a look at that in a few seconds. Besides that, you have a QR code, a spec sheet for the drone, as well as a schematic diagram for your flight controllers. Okay, so let's take a closer look at the Pavo 25 V2. And just at first glance, I can see that this thing takes a lot of inspiration from the Pavo 35. In fact, this thing looks identical, just scaled down a bit. Now compared to the V1, it looks like the footprint is a little bit smaller, although they still have the same two and a half inch propellers. Now talking about that, let's wait and see how much this thing here weighs. Ways. Boom. And we're looking at around 142 grams. Now this is without the VTX, and that's the way to save money, especially if you have spare VTX laying around. Now compared to the V1, wow, it's only three grams more, and this is with a VTX in here. Now, this is a custom build by myself here. This one here has the HD0 system in here, and that wasn't offered by Better FPV, so I decided to make a special build for this one. Now, if you're interested in building one of these with the HD0 system in here, I made a video on that, and I'll leave a link right here so you can take a look at it. Now, the V1 drone was known for its easy repairability with only six screws holding the frame to the actual ducts. Now, the V2 version has upped that with only four screws to access the electronic compartment on this drone so they've done some really good engineering and that makes it easy to repair or to service your drone in the long run now having said that now the standoffs on this drone here is pretty unique it's similar to the one on the Pavo 35 with these wide design standoff and that's to increase structural rigidity and reduce resonance going to the flight control so this is a pretty cool system here by Beta FPV and I do assume this is going to have really good results just like the Pavo 35. Now one of the biggest improvements compared to the version 1 is the action camera and FPV mount. Now on earlier models they had a solid TPU on here and to be honest with you it did a really good job but there was still some possibilities of vibration going to the action camera and the FPV feed. Now with the version 2 they did take a page out of the Power 35's book with this dampening system right here both for the FPV camera and the action camera. This should provide really smooth images going to the O3 air camera and we'll see if that's true today. This thing looks pretty pretty nice and you can actually adjust the tension on this right here. Now below we have these motors on here. These are the 1505 4600 kV and these are a little bit larger than the ones on the version 1. These are 1404 which was pretty much the standard at the time. Now hopefully this gives a little bit more thrust and the ability to carry more payload especially since this joint here is slightly heavier than the V1. Now connected to that we do have these tri-blade propellers here. These are the D63 very similar to the ones on the version 1. Now under here we have the flight controller. 
this one here is a huge step up from the version one. We have an F722 flight controller here with 35 amp ESCs. Now this one here is specced up pretty well because it also has a built-in black box and the ability to connect your VTF with just a plug. So this is a really huge improvement over the version one. In the back here, you have your XT60 connector and it's kind of, it is secure to the actual frame of the drone. And we've seen that here with the Pava 35 as well, which we have the XT60 connector built into the frame. Now it's a little bit different than the Pava 35 in the sense that it's in the rear versus the front, which is what I like because in the Pava 35, when you did plug your battery here, there was the potential for the wires to interfere with the action camera. With it being in the back, there's no chance of that ever happening. Where's my battery? And the wires will not interfere with your action camera. So that's a pretty cool design and I wish they did that with the Power 35. Now behind that you have the antenna for your receiver. This drone specifically has an Express LRS receiver built into it, but this drone can also be optioned with the Crossfire Nano receiver as well. Now finally you have a harness here and that's for your LED strip and we've seen it before on the Power 35 as well as the Power 20. Now this thing here weighs around 5 grams so you don't have to install it but this thing looks really really good at night or even in the daytime so I do highly recommend that you install this on your drone just to improve the aesthetics of this drone overall. So that's about it for this drone. We're going to install the camera and VTX in this drone, configure it on the computer and go take it for a flight. Okay, so we're back from our test flight and the Power 25 V2 did an amazing job, guys. This thing flew more like a three inch freestyle drone more than a Cinewhoop. Now, the weather today wasn't the best for this drone. We're talking about winds between 20 and 25 miles an hour. As you saw in the video, this thing was really steady. You can see the trees shaking left and right, but this thing was very, very steady in the wind. So I was really impressed by the characteristics of this drone. Now, I don't know if it was because of the frame construction or this wide standoff design, or if it's just the flight controller or the tune on this drone, but this thing did a really good job. Now, as you can see, this thing flew straight like an arrow, even in those strong winds, and it did generate some really smooth cinematic images. Now, even doing some light dives or some loops, this thing had really good composure. So the tune on this is very, very good, and I was really impressed by the flight characters of this drone overall. Now, the inherent design of a Cinehoop isn't gonna be as maneuverable as a freestyle drone, especially with these ducks on here, but this Power 25 v 2 did a really good job compared to some of the other Cinehoops that I've flown in the past. Now, moving on to the visuals of the Power 25. Now, this drone specifically accepts the DJ-03 air unit, and by now, this has been in the market for a long time, so we know the quality of the O3 air unit. You can expect a sharp image with a lot of contrast and a lot of saturations. Now, the good thing about this whole thing is that you can change the settings to your liking and get a more cinematic look by changing the settings in your goggles. So in that sense, we kind of know how the O3 is gonna deliver an image. What we didn't know is how this thing is gonna interact with the drone itself. Now I'm pleased to report that this thing did a really good job interacting with this frame overall. It was simply a plug and play affair. You just plug the harness into the VTX and into the flight controller, mount the VTX to the bottom plate, and you're good to go. In fact, the settings on here is set up for a digital VTX from the get-go. So there was little tweaking needed to be done in beta flight. Now, besides that, the image did deliver a smooth, a very silky smooth image on here. Never wanted to have any issues with the video on this. There was one instance though, on the widest field of view and a low camera angle, there was some times or opportunity to see some propeller ducks in the view. Now that's not gonna be a normal occurrence unless you're flying indoors, doing some really, really slow flying. But otherwise, if you're gonna fly this thing outdoors or any kind of normal speed, you're gonna have a little bit of angle on there and that duck does go away. So that's not really a common issue. Now, one thing you have to notice as well is that we do have these damping system here for both the FPV cam and the action cam. And I'm sure that's contributing a lot to reducing the vibration going to the camera itself. So kudos to Beta FPV for making this design and having a really smooth camera output or smooth information going to the camera here. So the image from this O3 was very impressive and kind of negated the need for having an action camera on here. Now you do have the ability to add an action camera on here, whether it be a naked GoPro, SMO 4K, or even something like a Runkin Thumb Pro would fit easy on here. Now I don't think you can put a full-size GoPro on here, 
But beta FB says you can put maybe a DJ Action 2 on here, which is light, and can give you some really good image if you're not, you know, pleased with the image coming from the O3 camera. Now moving on, let's talk about the RX link on this drone. Now the beta FPV Power 25 V2, my drone specifically does come equipped with a Express LRS receiver and antenna on here. And never once did I have any issues with Express LRS. Express LRS has been in the market for a while now and this thing has matured and it is kind of dependable. Now, typically when I fly a new drone, I fly close to myself, test it out and go further and further and further away. To the point with this drone, I was flying this drone over water, which I typically don't do unless this thing has GPS on board. So that gave me a lot of confidence. It was very confidence inspiring flying this drone and the RC link on this was rock steady, guys. So I don't think you will have any issues flying this drone with Express LRS, especially if you're on the newer firmware of the Express LRS. Last but not least, let's talk about the battery life of the Powerball 25 V2. Now I flew most of my flights on these new 850 milliamp hour lava batteries. These are the newest batteries by Beta FPV and these things, guys, are amazing. They're awesome. Now, I flew this drone numerous times on numerous batteries, and I was averaging between seven to seven and a half minutes of flight time. Now, I got those flight times by doing some mixed flying, doing some smooth cinematic flying, as well as some small flippy floppy, doing some acro maneuvers, doing some slight punch outs, and I do suspect you might get even higher flight times or longer flight times if you're flying this in the way it was designed, which is just some smooth cinematic flying, some flowy flying. Now, I was kind of like surprised by that. I went to the website, took a look at their specifications, and sure enough, it does say flight time is between six and eight minutes. And I'm getting right in the middle of there between seven and seven and a half minutes. So this thing is true to what it's advertising. Now, once again, I do want to say that these batteries are brand spanking new. I actually got these batteries specifically for this drone. So your performance and flight times may vary if you have older or even smaller batteries. Now, as I said before, these batteries are pretty awesome, guys. But one thing you have to know is that these things drop off pretty quickly, just like it did on my larger batteries here. These are lava batteries, and I did fly this as well with the larger brother here. This is the Pavo 35, and it did have a similar characteristics. This thing will give you all the voltage and all the amps and currents you need until it hits around 3.5 to 3.2 volts. Once you get around 3.6 volts, this battery falls off really quickly. We're talking about 20 seconds before this thing just stops flying airborne. So once you get to around 3.6 volts, I would highly recommend you start looking for a landing site to put the drone down. Okay, so overall, what do I think about the Pavo 25 V2? Well, I think Beta FV has found a sweet spot combining performance, size, and efficiency all packed into one drone right here. Now, the two and a half inch segment isn't new by any means, but this seems to be a step in the right direction. This thing is just perfect in all metrics and all sizes. I say perfect, but I'm sure technology is on the side of Beta FPV here. Now you have O3 in the front here capturing smooth cinematic 4K images, and it's the perfect technology for great penetration and range. You have this X-T30 in the back here, which is flush mounted to the drone and the frame on here, and it doesn't interfere with the action camera like some other drones. You also have Express LRS giving you the confidence to fly far near and in really remote places guys express lrs really is the way to go it's also small and very efficient so overall guys the power 25 is a pretty impressive drone guys this thing is small enough and light enough to fly indoors and powerful enough to even keep up with fast moving objects like cars and bicycle guys in my opinion it is their most versatile whoop in their fleet Having said that, I have the full range of Pavo drones in the fleet right here. Starting from the left, we have the Pavo Pico, the Pavo 20, the Pavo 25 V2, and the latest and biggest brother here, the Pavo 35. So Beta FPV has you covered in any aspect of your flying, guys. I've done full reviews on these drones here, and I'll leave them down linked below so you can take a look at it. So thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Peace.